We're spreading rumors about an old yet new Russian space plane on your Space Vidcast Daily for April 28, 2010. It seems that unmanned space planes are all the rage these days. The Air Force recently launched their X-37B, and last Friday, Russia hinted that they may revive one of their long-dead space plane programs. The Russian Multipurpose Aerospace System, or MAX, is an innovative space plane that had its development frozen in 1991. In response to the U.S. Air Force's recent launch of the X-37B, the Russian aerospace designer Vladimir Skorodelov has said that this could spur Russia to restart their own defunct space plane program. The Russian shuttle is much like the X-37B, about the same size, same style, and it is unmanned and can't get to orbit on its own. But back when it was designed in the 80s, the Russian shuttle would launch aboard an AN-225 airplane carrier, much like the Virgin Galactic White Knight carrier. Unlike Virgin Galactic, the MAX vehicle would sit on top of the airplane, not below it. The interesting thing about MAX is that there is both an unmanned and manned configuration of the vehicle. Well, actually, there are three versions of MAX on the table. MAX OS, which is the manned orbital vehicle, MAX-T, which is designed to inject heavy payloads into orbit, and finally, MAX-M, which is a completely reusable, unmanned space plane. This isn't the first space shuttle that Russia has designed and then canceled. Back in 1988, the Soviet Union launched the unmanned Buran space shuttle. Buran was about the same size and shape as NASA's current fleet of orbiters, but unlike NASA's orbiters, was able to fly completely unmanned. Due to financial difficulties, the program never got any additional traction, and only the one unmanned flight was made in November of 1988. Then in 1992, the program was canceled. The development of the MAX Aerospace System started when Buran was still in the creation phase. The major goal of the MAX project was to reduce the cost of space transportation operations and to increase the efficiency of the launch system itself. The current cost of sending 2.2 pounds of material to space aboard the U.S. Space Shuttle is around $20,000. That means that one gallon of water would cost nearly $100,000 to fly to the International Space Station. It was and still is hoped that MAX will be able to deliver the same weight for an estimated $1,000 to $1,200. Now that same gallon of water would cost around $5,500 to bring to the ISS. Of course, it could be that nothing ever comes for this. Vladimir is the chief designer of NOP Molinia, which was the company founded for the creation of the Buran shuttle and today works on reusable launch systems. This could just be wishful thinking on his part, or it could really spur some reinvestment into the MAX system for a next generation shuttle. While there are a few reports out there indicating that MAX has been revived and is being pushed for launch as soon as possible, we have been unable to confirm that said rumor and can only speculate at this time. Nevertheless, it sure would be cool if it was. And don't forget to join us this Friday at 2 a.m. Coordinated Universal Time for Space Vidcast Live. This week we'll have on guest Bill Souter, who is the author of Rocket Belt Pilot's Manual. This is your chance to ask someone who's flown an actual rocket belt your very own questions. For those of you in the U.S., the show will be this Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Time or 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Remember to pick up your copy of Rocket Belt Pilot's Manual from ApogeeBooks.com and we'll see you at the show.